the face of civilization has been shaped by the use of energy. Over the past century, coal, oil, natural gas and electricity have transformed the human condition. But as the world's population grows and demands increase, the thirst for energy can't be quenched by fossil fuels alone. Their limited supply and environmental repercussions have sparked a search for something better. The goal is a world powered by clean, efficient fuels, produced from renewable resources such as sunshine and wind. One possible answer is rising to the forefront and is being touted as the key to a clean, sustainable future. It's the fuel that took us to the moon. Hydrogen. Could it be the fuel of the 21st century? Hydrogen is the fuel of the future. I mean, there is no question in my mind. You can make it from a variety of different primary fuels through a variety of different processes. Is a hydrogen car going to cost more? Within our lifetimes, hydrogen will tangibly and positively affect the life of every single person. But is it safe? Some of the challenges are technical. Fuel cells are still addressing cost targets, performance targets. It could take a place much faster than many people believe. It will be uh, good for all the people of the world. Could the simplest atom in the universe be the fuel that powers our future? Governments and major corporations think so, and they're investing billions to develop this new energy source. Some say the development of hydrogen energy will spawn a revolution as dramatic as the light bulb or the microchip. Are we standing at the threshold of a new age? Hydrogen the most abundant element in the universe, powering all the stars, powering our own sun. Hydrogen is everywhere. Over 90% of all the atoms in the universe are hydrogen atoms. Combined with oxygen, it forms water. Add carbon and it's a basic building block of life. But in pure form, it can be a clean, safe and powerful fuel. Hydrogen could turn out to be as important to the energy economy of the 21st century as the silicon chip has been to the information economy. Hydrogen is not an energy source uh, such as coal or oil, uh, but it is a manufactured fuel like gasoline or electricity. And we can use renewable sources of energy such as solar power and wind energy to split molecules of water into hydrogen and oxygen. And then the hydrogen is available to be used as a fuel in our automobiles, in our homes, and even in our industries. World Watch Institute President Christopher Flavin has spent his career examining issues key to sustaining human progress on a finite planet. Some of today's biggest problems ranging from lung disease to climate change and terrorism are caused by our extraordinary dependence on fossil fuels. Hydrogen is really the answer to a fundamental challenge, which is how do we get elusive energy sources such as wind power and sunlight into the tanks of our cars. The other nice thing about hydrogen is that in the short run we can derive it from natural gas and potentially other fossil fuels so that the hydrogen age can begin almost immediately. In coming decades, hydrogen will power the largest machines down to the smallest electronic gadgets. We're going to see many fundamental changes because energy is central to pretty much all that we do. Author Peter Leiden, former managing editor of Wired magazine and the knowledge developer for Global Business Network, considers the impact new technologies will have on the future. If we were to jump into a time machine and fast forward 50 years, what would our world look like? There's a good chance that most of the technology we own would be powered by hydrogen. We'd be thinking back to this day and age and wondering how we ever survived without it. 
All new ideas are first thought of as really foolish, and then when they begin to catch on, they're fought against, and then they come to a stage where everyone says, well, it's so obvious, why was it ever questioned? Where will the hydrogen come from? Will it be as safe as the fuels we use now? How much will it cost? And how long before we use it in our own communities? While such revolutionary transitions are never achieved easily or quickly, there are areas where this one has already begun. We take a global journey to see how hydrogen could be the answer to some of today's most fundamental challenges. Iceland is a nation of raging waterfalls and geothermal abundance. In 1999, Iceland amazed the world when it announced its intention to become the first hydrogen society. <laughs> Professor Brage Arneson was the first to recognize the potential of hydrogen energy in Iceland. Having been uh, doing research work on our domestic energy sources for many years, it uh, came clear to me that hydrogen could be a very good solution to replace imported fossil fuel. Professor Arneson has been writing articles about hydrogen and the Hydrogen Society for the last 25 years. And a lot of people argue that he was the crazy professor if you go 25 years back because People didn't realize or think about this at that stage, and nobody worried about the issues we're worrying about in today's society. We have these cheap uh, energy sources, so we can start the transformation into hydrogen energy today, so that uh, Iceland could be some kind of pilot country to show how the transformation could be done. Icelandic Minister for Industry and Commerce, Mrs. Valgadur Sverisdotter, continues the story. The possibility of producing hydrogen has double benefit for us. Uh, for the first, it saves our foreign currency for importing oil. And secondly, it reduces our greenhouse gas emission. The Icelandic government strongly supports the use of hydrogen. In Iceland, the transition towards hydrogen is a national agenda. Iceland is seen as really a shining star in terms of the policies that they've adopted on hydrogen. One is that it's really woken people up. The support for the hydrogen economy project and the policies that are going into supporting that have, have been enormous. There are 95% of people are strongly in favor of developing a hydrogen economy in Iceland. You can see in the background here, have, we have a little bit of rain coming down, which I foresee is the best thing we can get, because it's raining power. <laughs> to be clear, hydrogen is a manufactured fuel. Just as gasoline is manufactured using oil, it has to be extracted from other things using energy. Hydrogen is everywhere, but it's hard to find as a separate element. Instead, it is found in combination with carbon in everything from hydrocarbon fuels to plants and animals. But the most readily available source of hydrogen is something we find all around us, water. The moisture that falls on the earth each hour contains enough hydrogen to meet our annual energy needs many times over. And in fact, the technology already exists to split that water using electricity, a process that scientists call electrolysis. An electrolyzer is used to separate the hydrogen in water. A water molecule known as H2O is composed of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. When electricity is applied to water containing an electrolyte, the molecule splits, drawing the oxygen towards the positive electrode and the hydrogen towards the negative electrode. Electrolysis can use any source of electricity, and since electrolyzers are scalable even to a very small size, 